Hey, you totally don't have to do it if you don't want to. Seriously, there's no pressure to introduce yourself to him if you're not feeling it. This is our call, not his. I'm sorry, but it's important for me to take this step. If we're truly committed to getting married, I want to introduce myself to your parents beforehand. I know that your father can be strict, but it's a respectful gesture I should make if I want to become your husband. Unfortunately, he's not just strict. He's a real challenge to have a conversation with. I believe I'll be okay. After all, he doesn't know anything about me yet. Right? I've only mentioned to him that I have a boyfriend, because I haven't gone into detail about what kind of person you are. Lately, he's been getting on my nerves. He keeps prying into personal stuff about you, you know? I told him that you had to leave school to start working, and he lost it completely. Oh, really? Why would he become furious? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. But like I said before, my dad's just a tough nut to crack when it comes to conversation. Hmm. I wonder if that's the issue. Maybe he's not happy about the fact that I didn't graduate high school. I've encountered that kind of judgment quite often. People tend to look down on me simply because I'm a high school dropout. Yeah, that's pretty much it. He's the type who places a lot of emphasis on grades and accomplishments. Being the CEO of a company, those things hold significant value to him. I'm sorry if it's offensive to you in any way. I can understand where he's coming from. I mean, he is the CEO of Zenith Enterprises, a major player in the business world. It makes sense that he might not be thrilled if someone like me asks to marry his daughter. But despite that, I really want to seek his blessing before we take the plunge. It just doesn't feel right to get married without talking to him first. I can't say for sure he'll like me, but it's something I feel compelled to do. Well, you don't have to go through all that hassle. How about we just run off to some distant city and get married there? I mean, I left my parents' place because I could not stand my dad anymore. I'm itching to break free from him, you know? Once we're married, I'll finally make a clean break. We can consider those options if he doesn't give me his permission to marry you. It's worth giving it a shot before completely giving up, right? We can't predict the future after all. There's a possibility he might end up liking me. I highly doubt it, to be honest. Why do we have to play by all these rules anyway? We don't need his permission to get married, you know? You know me so well, don't you? You're aware that I prefer to abide by societal norms whenever I can. Yeah, I know your personality well. I just feel like trying to convince him is a waste of time. But if you're dead set on doing this, I'll talk to him and arrange a meeting. I'm pretty sure it's going to end badly, though, just saying. Remember, I did warn you about it. Don't worry. I'll handle it. I'll go talk to him on my own. You can stay home, all right? I appreciate your concerns, really. Just remember, he can be pretty intense with his words. It might get a little bit intimidating if you're not used to it. Okay. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep it in mind. You miserable excuse for a human being. I swear on everything sacred, if I ever catch a glimpse of your sorry self in my house again, you'll regret it. You're nothing but a bottom-dwelling parasite, feeding off the scraps of decency. I wouldn't even wish to breathe the same air as your filthy existence. Right this damn instant, get the hell out of my house. Don't you dare test my patience any longer. Wow. This is way worse than I anticipated. You're more aggressive than anyone I've ever met. You're nothing but a worthless piece of trash. I can't believe I'm even bothering to waste my precious time talking to someone like you. I see right through your little game, you gold digger. I mean, just look at your greedy face, practically oozing with desperation for my money. It's crystal clear that the only reason you're interested in marrying my daughter is to get your grubby hands on my wealth. Ugh. Talking to you makes me physically nauseous, right from the pit of my stomach. Sir, please, try to relax and take a moment to compose yourself. There's honestly no reason for you to be so consumed by anger. I really have no interest in your money. I'm not a materialistic person, you know? My love for your daughter is sincere, 
and comes from the depths of my heart. That's the sole reason I wish to marry her. Man, I am beyond disappointed in Natasha right now. I mean, seriously, she's actually with a high school dropout like you? You're scraping the absolute bottom of the barrel in our society. Where the hell is she anyway? I know damn well you've kidnapped her or something. Quit wasting my time and hand her over already. I have not kidnapped her. She is living with me because she wants to. I decided to come here alone today because I didn't want her to worry about me. I wanted to talk to you, man to man. Why on earth would I ever want to waste my precious time talking to someone like you? Your breath reeks so badly that it's literally suffocating me. I genuinely wish you would just shut up and keep that foul mouth of yours closed because it's turning the whole damn house into a stink fest. Seriously, what the hell do you even eat every day? Do you chug from the sewage like it's your personal beverage dispenser or what? The insults just keep pouring in, don't they? I better grab my notepad and pen because I definitely want to take notes on how to be a master of mockery. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll have the pleasure of using them on someone deserving. Oh, uh, quit with the smart aleck act already. You didn't even manage to graduate high school for crying out loud. While you were out there slacking off, I've been busting my ass, dedicating my life to studying and achieving greatness. I've reached heights you could only dream of, graduating from a top-notch university. I've been climbing the corporate ladder at elite companies ever since, and guess what? I'm currently the CEO of Zenith Enterprises, in case you forgot. Yes, I'm already aware of all that. Your company, Zenith Enterprises, has quite a reputation, and I've actually heard of it before as well. Listen up, you low-life criminal. I've got an ironclad sense of justice coursing through my veins, and I won't stand idly by while scumbags like you threaten the safety of my family. Hold on a moment. Let's take a step back to here. I believe you're blowing things out of proportion. I assure you, I am not a criminal in any way. I really don't understand what you're trying to say. Oh, please. Spare me the innocent act. Maybe you're not a criminal at this very moment, but mark my words, you're destined to join their ranks sooner or later. I can practically read it on your face, those sneaky little expressions that scream, future criminal. Don't think for a second that you can fool me with your feeble attempts at innocence. Hmm. I'm really curious as to what kind of face I was making when I was talking to you. It's fascinating to think about what impression I might have unintentionally conveyed. In any case, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you in any way. Oh, look at you, the epitome of ignorance. I can tell you've never bothered to crack open a book in your entire life. You're nothing more than a pathetic high school dropout, aren't you? I wouldn't be surprised if your own dim-witted parents were nothing but a bunch of incompetent criminals themselves, letting you abandon your education like it's some kind of joke. Any decent parent with two brain cells to rub together would never allow their child to make such a foolish decision. But hey, I guess you come from a long line of moronic lawbreakers. Could you please refrain from discussing my parents in such a manner? My mother faced the challenging task of raising me single-handedly while battling an illness. I made the difficult decision to leave high school solely to support her financially, covering both her medical expenses and our daily living costs. Wow, your family is desperately broke, aren't they? It's pretty obvious that your parents didn't bother saving any money. How irresponsible of them. Are you seriously saying that? How could you say such a thing? Your sob story is so tragic, it's laughable. You really think I'm going to feel sorry for you? Well, think again. I don't care how much you try to manipulate my emotions. I'm not going to hand over my precious daughter to a pathetic loser like you. No way. I have high standards, and I want my daughter to marry someone who's actually worth something. Clearly, you're just a lazy good-for-nothing who can't even take care of themselves, let alone provide for a family. So, save your pity party for someone who actually cares, because it's not going to work on me. Did you really just refer to me as a lazy good-for-nothing? I've put in tremendous effort to reach the position I'm in today. I don't perceive myself as a failure in any way. Also. I'm serious. Don't insult my parents ever again. 
I hold a deep appreciation of my mother, and even if given the opportunity, I wouldn't want anyone else to have raised me. That excuse is beyond weak, and it's definitely not going to cut it if you think you're worthy of marrying my daughter. Instead of wasting your breath with these pointless stories, why don't you actually contribute something meaningful to society? Maybe then we can have a conversation worth having. But until then, don't even bother trying to convince me of your worthiness. It's an absolute joke. I guess it's pointless trying to have a normal conversation with you. Oh, look at you, you pathetic leech. It's crystal clear that all you're after is my hard-earned cash, using my daughter as your golden ticket to a life of luxury. Well, newsflash, you delusional dropout, I would never even consider entrusting my precious daughter to a lowlife like you. Couldn't even finish high school. So, do us all a favor and get the hell out of here right this instant. Your presence is not only an insult, but it's also an utter waste of my valuable time. Scram, you worthless parasite. Fine. I'll do as you say. Goodbye. Yeah, that's right, you piece of trash. Man, what is up with your dad? He's totally off his rocker. Babe, this is exactly why I keep telling you not to bother seeing him. I tried so hard to get through to you, but you just wouldn't listen to a word I said. I honestly didn't expect him to be such a horrible person. I've never met anyone as despicable as him before. Is he truly the CEO of a company? It's difficult to think that someone like him can hold any position of authority and expect to be respected. Honestly, I feel like he's gotten even more arrogant and obnoxious since he climbed up the corporate ladder. So, tell me, what ended up happening after you had that encounter with him? We couldn't even have a decent conversation. He was just constantly throwing insults my way, so I made the smart move and walked out. <sighs> Screw all this drama. Let's just do what you suggested from the start and elope. It would have saved us so much trouble. Yeah, we should have just done that from the start. Sometimes it's alright to bend the rules a little bit, especially when we're not doing anything illegal. It's a bummer, though. I had this tiny sliver of hope that against all odds, you two would hit it off somehow. But hey, he's in for a real shocker when he finally discovers who you truly are. I can't wait to see the look on his face. I had hoped that he would recognize me when I went to see him. But to my disappointment, he didn't even give me a chance to speak. He simply told me to go home without any opportunity to explain myself. It was disheartening to say the least. He's getting up there in age, so maybe his memory isn't what it used to be. Plus, you had that mask on, right? No wonder he didn't recognize you. But you know what? None of that really matters anymore. I'm done with him. I'm cutting all ties. We don't have to see or talk to him ever again. You know what? I think that's the best decision we could make. And I gotta say, I'm seriously blown away by how you turned out to be such a compassionate person, considering he's your dad and all. It's probably all thanks to your mom. She was truly an amazing person. It's just so unfortunate that she passed away at such a young age. I've made every effort to overcome such an immense loss, but it's still proving to be too overwhelming for me. I am really thankful for your mother. Yeah, I am as well. I miss her so much. I'm glad that you're here with me, Dean. Hello? It's me, Natasha's father. What's the matter? Do you have something to ask me? It's just that I received a letter from her this morning. It said that she's cutting all ties with me and that your name is Dean Elliot. I see. I had no idea that she sent a letter to you. That's very kind of her. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to get married to her regardless of what you said to me. That doesn't really matter right now. Are you telling me that you're really Dean Elliot? Yes, you're right. I am the person featured in the TV advertisements for Zenith Enterprises. I work as an actor. Wow, I had no idea about that. It's quite surprising to be honest. I'm curious though, why didn't you mention it during our meeting the other day? I was told to get out before we could even have a normal conversation. You just kept on spitting insult after insult. You probably weren't listening to a single word that I said anyway. I'm sorry about how I treated you. I was probably having a very rough day. Okay. Why did you decide to contact me? 
I don't particularly want to be talking to you. If you have nothing to say, then I'm going to put my phone down. I want you to let me apologize to you. I had no idea you were Dean Elliot. I'm sorry for my attitude that day. I guess I was a little harsh on you. I'm not going to forgive you even if you apologize to me. You were being overly aggressive and never gave me a chance. I'm never going to forget that. I could never say the things that you said to me, even to my worst enemy. I'm very sorry for the things I said to you. I understand why you wouldn't want to forgive me. If I knew who you were, I never would have treated you that way. I may be successful now. It still doesn't change the fact that I was born in a poor family and that I dropped out of high school. Everything that you said to me hit me where it hurts. Not to mention brought up painful memories. It's not something that I can just forget. Wait, I didn't actually mean any of that. I didn't think you would take my words so seriously, to be honest. Also, you never would have apologized if I wasn't Dean Elliot, right? You're only saying sorry after realizing who I am. There's just no way that I can forgive a person like you. Your apologies sound so empty to me. Do you really know what you did wrong? Of course I know what I did wrong. I got a little too carried away because I didn't know who you were. You really don't get it. You shouldn't be that aggressive no matter who you're talking to. It doesn't matter if you're talking to a famous actor or a high school dropout. You need to treat everyone with more respect. Yeah, maybe that's true. I know why you're apologizing to me. This is very bad for you and the company if it gets out. The CEO of a company shouldn't be calling the poster child a piece of trash. I'm sure you also falsely accused me of being a criminal? I wonder what would happen to you if the entire world found out about this. Are you threatening me right now? No, I wouldn't do such a thing. I have no intention of telling the world what you said to me. It's just that Natasha seemed very adamant on telling the world about everything. I did try to stop her, but I'm not sure it was enough. If I were you, I'd try to talk to her about it. What are you saying? Is she trying to destroy my life? Seems like she has a lot of hatred towards you. Now that she's cut ties with you, who knows what she might try to do. That can't be good. I better talk to her right away. Hey, Natasha. I heard what's going on from Tom. I heard that you're planning to release my secrets to the world. Are you trying to destroy my life? Yeah, it's really true. I've had to endure so much pain being raised by you. I also saw the text you sent to him. I was absolutely disgusted. How could you talk to people like that? I've already leaked all the screenshots and other things to the media. This is just a little revenge for me. Wait, what? You're joking, right? I'm not joking at all. I can't forgive you for what you did to us. I was just planning to cut ties with you, but that would be boring. How dare you do such a thing? This is going to cause problems for so many people. Your stupid decision is going to make the value of my company stock go down. All of my employees and the owners of my company stock are really going to struggle. I'm sorry, but I really don't care about that. I'm sure they'll all be fine in the end. Please hold on a minute. Could you please rethink this? I need you to do something about this. There's nothing I can do about it now. The information is already spreading around the internet. It's going to be all over the place by tomorrow. My work phone won't stop ringing. I can't believe what you've done to me. Aren't you my daughter? Yes, I am your daughter. I had to be the one to do this. No one else would be brave enough to stand up to you. You're going to have to resign from your position. That's the only way you can stop matters from getting worse. You need to give up and resign right now. There is no way I'm resigning my position. That company is going nowhere without me. All the employees respect and look up to me. What are they going to do without me leading them? Wait, what? Do you really think they'll respect and look up to you? You're joking, right? All of your employees are over the moon about finding out what you did. Wait, what? Nobody at the company respects you. They were just scared of you and the power that you had. You would insult and threaten them all when they didn't listen to you. I also heard some bad rumors about you from the young women in the company. That's because... 
I've also been talking to some people that work for you, and I've heard some horrifying stories about you. I'm going to send all these stories to the media as well. That's about all I want to say to you, and I'm finally going to cut ties with you for real this time. Goodbye. Wait, please don't go yet. I really will apologize for everything that I did. Please don't abandon me. We're family, aren't we? If you abandon me, I'll have no one else left. I don't want to be a part of your family. You're a terrible human being. I promise that I'll change myself. I plan to treat other people with respect from now on. I'm begging you to please come back and live with me. I'm sorry, but that's never going to happen. I hate you as a person. And also, one more thing, you absolutely stink. After his daughter severed all ties with him, he was forced to resign from his position at the company. It became inevitable once major news outlets began exposing his actions to the world. Recordings of his voice and stories detailing his mistreatment of employees were leaked, intensifying the situation. He quickly transformed into one of society's most despised people, making it highly unlikely for him to secure future employment. Moreover, he faced multiple lawsuits from former employees, citing harassment and sexual abuse among other grievances. The resulting damages he had to pay amounted to millions of dollars. Presently, he resides alone in his sprawling house, rarely venturing outside due to the constant harassment from people who taunt him about his foul reputation. It's become a sick game for some to capture his reactions and share them online. In contrast, I'm genuinely relieved that we chose to marry without his blessing. It was a wise decision to distance ourselves from that toxic influence. Oh my gosh, is this Audrey? I hope I got your number right. It's Isabella. Hello, is anybody there? I have something important to ask. Hello. I am sorry, but who is this? I don't seem to have an Isabella saved into my phone. How did you get this number? You don't remember me. That is so mean. How could you forget all the fun we had together? I'm sorry, I don't remember you. Would you mind reminding me where I should know you from? I'm Josh's mom. Josh's mom. Oh, do you mean the Josh that went to Miller Daycare? The one in the same class as Alex? You're that Josh's mom. Yes, that's right. I'm that Josh's mom. I can't believe you forgot me. I've almost hurt, you know. I'm really sorry that your name didn't ring any bells. After all, it has almost been, what, three years or something since then? Now they don't even go to the same schools, so I guess it had just slipped my mind. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't really know much about what your kid is up to right now. But anyways, I had a tiny little favor that I really need to ask you. Oh, alright then. How can I help you? Would you mind if I dropped Josh off at yours so you could watch him for a bit? I'm sorry. You want me to babysit your son for you? And his little sister, if that's okay. I have two kids now. The little one is named Sophie. You want me to babysit both of your kids? I am sorry, but I really don't think I can do that for you. Besides, we've moved since the last time I saw you. Oh, I already knew all of that. You did. Yeah! Don't you live by Disney theme park or something now? Man, that has got to be awesome. I'm so jealous. I mean, you're next to one of the best Disney attractions in the whole world. That is really insane. I bet that you and your family must go there and have fun all the time. No, just because we live nearby doesn't mean we're always going to Disney. Maybe just a couple times a year, if we can manage it around everything else. Anyways, I heard that you'd move to one of the neighborhoods in the closest school district to the park. So I did some searching and finally figured it out. Sorry, what exactly did you figure out? Well, you have kind of a unique name, which really narrowed it down for me. So I opened up some maps, did some research online, and I finally narrowed it down to this house. 
Wait, this house. Are you already here? Of course I am. I'm actually about to go to Disney Park myself, which is why I want you to look after my kids for a bit. No, I'm sorry. I cannot do that for you. Besides, wouldn't it be much better if you took your kids with you and enjoyed the time together? Children love theme parks. I don't see why you wouldn't take them. Well, duh! But the reason I can't take them is because I want to spend some quality time there, just my boyfriend and I. Wait, boyfriend? But I thought you were married. Well, I guess if you really want to put labels and that sort of stuff on things, then it'd be more accurate to say my clandestine lover. You're what now? The only reason I brought my kids all the way out here with me was because my husband told me I had to watch them today. He didn't even ask me. Can you believe that? I am sorry, but why exactly do you think I would want to be involved in this? I really don't want anything to do with your affair, especially not helping you carry it out. Oh, Audrey, what are you talking about? And after all this time, I was really hoping we would still be friends. Were we ever really friends? Why else would I think to come and ask you for your help if I didn't see you as my friend? I was wondering that myself. But you know, it really doesn't matter right now because I want you to turn around and get away from my house. Even if you knock on my door, I am not going to be taking your kids into my house. Oh, perfect. Thanks so much for agreeing to watch over them. What? No. Did you even read what I just sent you? Oh, no. Don't tell me you still haven't even noticed. What kind of babysitter are you? I left my kids on your front porch about 15 minutes ago now. You did what? Do you have any idea what time it is right now? Are you crazy? Well, anyways, we're already inside the park, so it's a little late to do anything about it now. Okay, anyways, I gotta go. I need to spend some time with my boyfriend. Wait! Don't go yet, this is important. What is it now? Well, I just checked outside and your kids weren't there. Wait, what did you just say? I'm standing on the porch right now, but I don't see anyone. Are you really sure that you dropped them off at the right address? Okay, come on now, there's no need to try and trick me. Before I dropped them off, I checked in your mailbox to make sure the names were the same. I get that you don't want to babysit, but honestly, there is no need to lie to try to get out of it. I'm not lying. There really is nobody here. Okay, look, I was trying to be nice, but let me lay it out for you here. If you don't babysit my kids for me tonight, I'll tell your husband about you know what. You know what? And just what am I supposed to know about? Come on now, you can't play dumb with me. I know too much already. What on earth are you talking about? I literally have no idea what this is about. What are you getting out of playing dumb, huh? You're wasting all the time I have with my boyfriend here. Anyways, I'm turning off my phone now. Wait, no, this isn't a game, I'm being serious. Anyways, I'll come pick them up the day after tomorrow. Excuse me, you'll pick them up when? What's the big deal? It's only two days. You should be able to handle that. I'm serious. Your kids aren't here. I don't know where they are. Uh-huh, sure. Bye-bye. Jerry, are you there? Are you off work already? I need to talk to you. Yeah, the conference ended for the day just a bit ago. I'm just getting back to the hotel where I'm staying at now. What's up? There is a serious emergency. Wait, what? What happened? Is everything okay? Well, this woman whose kid used to go to the same daycare as Alex suddenly messaged me out of nowhere saying that she wanted me to watch her two kids. I tried telling her no, 
but then she told me that she already left her kids on our doorstep and drove off. Wait, what? Who is this person? Are they insane? So she brought her kids all the way from our old neighborhood to our new address and just left her kids there? That's what she said, but when I went outside to check our front porch, there was nobody there. Just to be safe, I got in the car and drove around the block, but I never found any lost-looking kids. What do you think happened to them? But honey, that's still not all. The whole reason this lady wanted me to watch her kids in the first place was because she wanted to spend the day at Bisney with someone she's having an affair with. The plot thickens. What a mess. I know, right? And I still don't really have all the details. But I told her that there was no sign of her kids anywhere, and she just refused to believe me. Then she told me that I was annoying her and that she was going to turn her phone off. Wow, this is crazy. I, I don't even know where to start. What is the crazy lady's name? Well, I was never really all that close to her, but I know that her name is Isabella. And that she has two kids, a son named Josh and a daughter named Sophie. A lady named Isabella with kids named Josh and Sophie. I feel like I might know this person from somewhere, but I can't remember where. Do you have any idea at all where you might? Just one moment. I need to think. I got it! Now I remember. It was my class reunion I went to last year. You saw her there? I'll tell you all about it later, but I have someone who might be able to corroborate this. I need to call them real quick. Of course. Meanwhile, I'll keep looking for those poor little kids. I'll get back to you soon. Okay, good luck with everything. Oh, Audrey! Guess who's back? And we had just the most amazing time at Disney Park. We made so many amazing memories together. It was just a truly magical time. We're on our way back now, though, so please get my kids ready. Ah, Isabella. Glad you thought to reach out to me again. Well, of course, you do have my kids, after all. And thank you so much for watching over them. None of this would have been possible without your help. Like I told you the other day, I never once had your kids at my house, and I certainly don't have them here right now. I was trying to warn you. Wait, so... No, it can't be. You mean the kids have just been on their own the past two days? What is wrong with you? I trusted you with them and you let them wander off? Do you know what I will do to you if anything has happened to them? Are you even paying attention to what I'm saying? They were never here in the first place. Stop lying to me. I checked, okay? When I left them at your place, I looked at your mail and made sure I had the right address. Well, I'm sure that you did, but when you looked up Disney World, I'm assuming you looked up the one in California, right? Yeah, obviously. Where else would I look? I knew that you moved there. That was the whole reason I was looking into the neighborhoods around there in the first place. That's why I know for a fact that I dropped off my kids at your house. Hmm, I thought so. How should I put this? Yes, I do live near a Disney park, but not the one in California. We moved to Florida, so we live near that park. Huh, you mean Disney Planet? You moved all the way across the country? That's right. About three years ago, my husband's company offered him a position in Florida. They even paid for us to move. Wait a second, so that means that the Audrey whose house I left my kids at was... Isabella, are you sure you remember my full name? Well, sure, you're Audrey Livingston, right? That name is not even close. Wait, what? Then what is your name? Who even are you? This is just a hunch of mine, but... I seem to remember one other mother from the daycare with the name Audrey. And I think her last name actually was Livingston. Are you kidding me? So basically, I think you just left your kids in front of this totally different lady's house. 
So then, wait. That means that neither of us have any idea where my kids really are? No, no, there's no need to worry about that now. What? What happened now? Do you know something? Well, I'm actually here with your husband right now. Huh? You're with Jim? Yes. In fact, I didn't know any of this until the other day, but your husband and my husband actually used to be classmates in high school. I never knew that! I guess both of their parents lived in the same school district, so they both ended up going to the same place. And when I told him the names of your kids, it finally all came back to him that he and your husband reconnected at the class reunion last year. So, of course, he reached out to Jim, who reached out to a police station near Bisney Park and explained what had happened. Well, not long after that, the police were able to call him back and tell him that they'd found the children and were watching over them at the station. So then, you're saying that my husband... Yes, he knows all about your affair and what you've done now, including that part about this whole trip being an elaborate plot to spend time with your lover. How could you be so cruel? Well, we'll see how you like it when I expose all of your dirty little secrets. My dirty little secrets like what? Like about the fact that you had an affair three years ago yourself. Excuse me, I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't lie, I saw it. I saw what happened between you and Parker Fields from the daycare. I really don't think you know what you're saying right now. I know that you'd invite him home when you thought no one was around. Well, I was. And this is how I'll take you both down. We'll see how you like it when your husband knows about your affair. <sighs> Wait, is that really what you think happened? That's right. I know the truth. So you better prepare for my revenge. Parker is just my little brother. Wait, come again? He's your little brother. How can that be? Well, around that time three years ago, Parker had just moved to the area and was living by himself. So, I would invite him to her house now and then for dinner and to catch up with him. No, that can't be right. I thought I had an ace in the hole. That I'd just have to threaten to expose your affair and you'd watch my kids. Well, I never even had them in the first place, so... But wait, if my husband knows about the affair, then... Oh, no. All right, that reminds me. Your husband has a message for you. Oh, God. He said that he's going to be divorcing you, that he plans to take the kids, and that you shouldn't bother going back home. Ouch, that sounds really rough. My condolences. This can't be happening to me. I don't get it. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It's not fair. Anyways, now that we've cleared up the whole business of my affair, do you have anything else to say for yourself? What? What should I do? I don't have anywhere to go. My life is over. Hmm, that really isn't any of my concern. But wait, you can't just leave things here. Actually, I can. Bye. After that, Isabella still tried going to her old house, but found that the locks had been changed and that her key no longer worked. Her kids were furious about being left in the middle of some unknown town, and both shouted that they hated their mother when they saw her. That was, of course, followed by a divorce and her husband getting custody of the children, which was, of course, accompanied by a hefty fine for child support, Afterwards, Isabella was disinherited by her parents, who were furious at her, and finally the man she was cheating with broke up with her for being too high maintenance. Now she lives all alone in a crappy little apartment where she cries every day while eking out a pitiful existence. And while I was never really hurt by any of this, I can't help but wonder about the sheer number of coincidences and miscalculations necessary to bring about such a strange story.